Boy, good afternoon. How are you, sir? I'm doing well, T. How are you doing, brother? I'm good. I'm where I'm. Uh, I try. I just trying the light that you gave me for Christmas. Um, I'll have to toy with it because you know I'm trying to avoid showing my core puzzles to whomever trips over this podcast. The uh, I'm wearing a jacket that your brother gave me two two Christmases ago, and and I was trying your lights out. So you know, I was, I'm feeling warm all over. You feel loved, feel but uh, so love. But uh, is are the lights too bright, or or is it? Is well, it actually, much? before we started recording, I was just showing you, and it, it comes with like multiple colors. Uh, the one that you saw was blue, yeah, and then the red shows the actual blood flowing through my head, <laughs> and then there's a white and a green and a yellow. So I'll, I'll toy around with it in the future podcast. Yeah. We'll have it down to a science. Yeah, the um. The model I have, it's like a ring. The light is like a circular ring. And like I just saw that in a movie, actually. So I don't know if that's more of a common thing. I, yeah, again, we, we're just learning about this stuff, right? But uh, mine has three settings, but you can dim it. Uh, hopefully yours can be dim because the dimming part is important. Down 10%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, but I'll toy around with it um, and, and I'll get it uh, correct. Gotcha. So what's going on? What's going on in your world? As we speak, I think we're on vacation this week. Yeah, it seems like a lot of our, a lot of our podcasts are wrapped around me being off. So, well, that's why um, you that profession in the first place. Don't try and fool us. Yeah, what are you going for? Oh, it was part of it for sure, but you know, it's uh, it's 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 evolved into more than that. But yes, that that definitely is an amazing uh, perk if you like the job. Yeah, you know, um, I, I'm off this week. I'm I'm excited. I'm actually going to play some golf tomorrow. Which, uh, which I, I just, I, I don't know about you, man, but this winter we've talked about, it's been cold. I've kind of just been in the apartment, you know, like you go from the apartment to the car to the, wherever you're headed and you're, it's like, you're just not really doing outside stuff. So yesterday I was able to go to, to a field and, and do some golf chipping for like an hour, just to have the headphone, headphones in. It was part, it was what, you know, it's like, you got to start getting out of this cave business that we've kind of been into. So. Yeah, you know, and then tomorrow I'm, thinking I'm, I'm headed back down to the Bronx, though. So, which I'm not—I don't love the idea, but the golf courses up here aren't open yet. So, oh, we're in the Bronx. The Van Cortland, you know Van Cortland. Oh, Van Cortland golf course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the city isn't doesn't the city run that? Yeah, see, all the city courses—they never close, but they'll they'll close for like the day or for the week if snow's on the ground. Yeah. Which it may come the day after tomorrow, uh, as we're recording this, it's supposed to snow. Friday or Thursday or something. Oh, really? Yeah. So it was like um, Sunday. Saturday was the weirdest day. Just so people know, we're recording this um, February. Uh, actually, February twenty second, twenty twenty two. So a lot of twos today. Um, that's when this has been recorded. So Sunday that just passed. Excuse me, Saturday that just passed. Um, I left my house around nine a.m. And it was, it felt like it was 60 degrees out. The sun was blaring. Mm. And then I got to the store to open the store at 11 a.m. Because, you know, it takes me two hours to get to work. That's a joke. But anyway, <laughs> um, it was, it was like a, a snow squall. It yeah. was dark. It was yeah, yeah, yeah. like a blizzard. And actually snow accumulated. And then the sun came out around one o'clock. And the temperatures jumped right up. Everything was melting. And then around two o'clock, it started snow squalling again. It was like being in three separate months all on the same day. Yeah. And then Sunday was like a very beautiful day. And this is a Tuesday, today, Tuesday. Yes, correct. So yesterday was President's Day. It was, it was, it was like a spring, like a late spring day. It was warm, sunny, nice. Now it's raining and cold, and it's supposed to snow later in the week. God bless this country. <laughs> Tomorrow is supposed to be 60, which I, that's why I'm going out to play golf. It's supposed to, you know, in the city, it's supposed to get up to like 60. So, yeah, maybe that means 55, but, but like, I'll take it. Um, I think Saturday, because where I was with my brother and we went to my uh, nephew's basketball game, I think Saturday was the first time I, because I saw the snow squall as well. I think it's the first time I've ever even witnessed one before. I, I can't remember that ever happened. Like it came out of nowhere and it was like a whiteout. 
for like a good 30 minutes. You're like, holy shit. This is- was that Saturday? Yeah, it was, it was the same thing you were talking about. And, you know, we're not that far from each other. So um, I don't know about you, but I don't know if I've ever seen that before. A snow squall. Oh, and then the sun came out and then a squall again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was it was crazy. I was like, wow, like, it was weird. We ended up getting like two inches of snow, but every time the sun came out, it melted like almost immediately. You know, and the temperature shot up, shot down, shot up. So, yeah. but what are you going to do? It's, 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 uh, Anytime you can get 60 degrees in February, though, is a, is a beautiful thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, usually this break, I, I never usually go away this break, this break, but there's always a day like over the years where like February over the break, there'll be like a day or two where it's, it's spring like, but then, you know, obviously it's, it's not spring yet. You know, you know, there's gonna be some cold days ahead of us. You could have snuck down to Wil- Wilmington, North Carolina. The, pre- the previous podcast, which as we're recording came out yesterday, very interesting podcast. So I'll I'll commend Dan Cassidy. It was it was uh, I learned a lot actually. Yes, it was yeah, he, uh, firing. I I almost thought a couple of minutes about getting out and exercising. I got over that, but the way he oh, was, does he talk about I can't, you know, going through the pain, yeah. the game. I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm starting exercise. Screw that. <laughs> yeah. He's like, it, yeah, he was talking about how it has to be. Hard. He's like, it should be hard, which I understand that. Like I understand that concept, you know. Um, but whatever. No, I understand. Uh, it's it's I like it when it is a concept, you know. Yeah, it's you you um, uh, uh, for me like I, I think I re, I respect or appreciate is a better word. I appreciate when I go through something and it was hard and I get through it probably more than when it was just something I just went through and it was easy. Yes. Yeah. But there's days where I'm like I, I want it to be easy. <laughs> there's days where I don't want to go through when it's fucking hard. Yes. I should explain. I, I should have explained when we were talking about the lighting. I, you gave me these lights for Christmas, which thank you. And I haven't gotten around to it, but um, the podcast. Well, I used to do the podcast out of a a larger room, um, which you know, being a cheap ass, that I'm renting it out to antique dealers. So we remodeled the whole second floor of my building here, and now I'm in a little cubby hole in the back. Maybe it sounds better. Who the hell knows? Maybe, yeah, that's, I mean, are you comfortable? Restricted. I feel like a little claustrophobic back here, you know. Is it that tight? Well, it's small. Yeah. Compared to, to you know, you you did one in-house, you know, it was a big room we were in. Yeah, you were able to have, have me, you, and a guest in there. Yeah, we could have played tennis in there. Could have. Yeah. Might, might have we might have broken something. But yeah. That's all right. There's enough room. I have to do some more remodeling here. There's enough room. Well, eventually we'll get back to the occasional live in-house guest, but uh, we're going to have to stick to our guests being on Zoom for the short term. Yeah, yeah. which is fine. It's practical when you have a guy like we had last week, which was Dan Cassidy, and he's down in North Carolina, so. Yeah, yeah, and that, that means we, maybe we could start exploring different people from around the country. Yeah, to, uh, I'll, I'll give complete disclosure because we like being transparent here. I don't really watch, I, I edit, when I'm doing the editing of the video portion and the audio portion, I don't really listen or watch it until it actually comes out. You know, so I gave gotcha. it a watch. I gave it a watch last night and uh, <coughs> found it to be very interesting. Yeah, I mean, his 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 uh, arc, his career, the arc of his career, of his entrepreneurial career, is pretty. I, I, you know, I always, I thought it was, I didn't know as much as I thought I did, you know, like the idea that he just kept building off of, of, off of like the experiences he went through. He didn't like, I don't know, I don't know enough. I'm not an entrepreneur, but like, let's say you're selling apples and it doesn't work out. Like, you know, a lot of people might stop trying to sell like apples and fruits and then they, they try something completely different. Whereas he just kept building off his experiences in the same kind of industry. Yeah. It's pretty cool. an interesting industry as he describes it too. Yeah. Yeah, so. I, don't, I don't know the first thing about it, but it sounded exciting the way you're describing it. Yeah. So, but it was good. Ended up being a pretty good, interesting podcast. So I recommend it to anybody tripping over this one. It's uh, it's one or two back from this one. So uh, I forget what I called it. Oh, e-commerce, I think is the name of it. E-commerce, that's it. Uh, ho- like something Hopper, his name is business. Now, the one before that, we had a lot of views and we were trying to figure out why. And we always say, we've been saying for almost a year, we've been doing this podcast almost a year. 
It was a huh, when did we start last May? May of 2021. Yeah, it's almost been a year. Yeah. Yeah. So it was what we've always said, and we've said multiple times in the past that we're learning as we go. So I didn't realize until we were trying to figure out why so many people listened to and watched the previous one with uh, the military antique collecting guy. Um, the keywords, you got to put uh, proper keywords. Uh, what's the word? Meta, meta tags? Oh, keywords? Whatever they call it. <coughs> you all right? I got like a tickle in my throat. Sorry, keep going. That's all right. Um, so, yeah, that's what, you know, it was, a, it was a learning lesson as to, you know, how that works. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the whole like I said to you, that's kind of right. You know, we're right, we're right where we're supposed to be with that because we learned it when we we're supposed to learn it. You know? mm -hmm. So I see you're sporting a beard for your vacation. I am. I mean, I, I just made an appointment tomorrow for a hair. Like my, this is the longest my facial head, top of my head and my face have been in probably my entire life. <laughs> um, so yeah, just uh, this winter it, it it got me last week. Like I was January, I handled it. First week of February up to the Super Bowl, I handled it. And then, like, it was, like, Monday or Tuesday after the Super Bowl, and it was just, like, six degrees. And I'm, like, I lo I give up. I, like, I tapped out. I was, like, you know, and I was just, like, I can't do this anymore. I just, I just don't want to do winter anymore. Oh, winter, yeah. Well, February has a way of making you sick to death of it, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's just, like, so the positive is next week is March. Yeah. So... Whether it's great weather or lousy weather out, it goes fast. It doesn't yeah. matter what the hell time of the year it is. So, but I'm trying to sport a mustache too. Give me another six years, I'll have one. All right. All right. Yeah, my 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 shit goes fast, man. A little Raleigh fingers action, you know. <laughs> yeah. The uh, if you're not from the Northeast and you don't understand how important March is to uh, to the people up here, it's an important month. With the what the uh, St. Patty's Day. Well, just coming out of winter, yeah, and then St. Pat St. Patrick's Day is like the unofficial like day where like things start to usually turn. And yeah, but like, March can bite you in the ass. Even late March, you can get a blizzard. <clears throat> it can, it can. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that it's not gonna happen this year, but it can. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> you know, you're not really safe, safe till you get into like second half of May, uh, April. Excuse me. Yeah, well, you know, me and my brother don't even go to opening day. Firstly, mainly because it's. So it's on a weekday and then it's you know but like we sell our opening day tickets um because it's just it's cold man <laughs> you know well when i was a kid i went almost every year to opening day and it was always a very cold day it was not not, it's cold. Too, not too far removed from going to a football game in january it was really cold and the you know when i went it was the old shea stadium which if you, if anybody ever went to Shea Stadium that's listening, you can sit up in the grandstands, which I always did. And it's like a wind tunnel up there. Oh, you're freezing your balls off up there. Yeah. So, I know what you mean. It's a good ticket to sell. <laughs> yeah. What, you, what was the package again? You're 16 games a year? Uh, 20. So this year is a little interesting, though. So I don't know how it's going to play Are out. going to have baseball this year? Yeah, there'll be baseball this year. They're They're meeting this week. So whatever, the first couple of like back and forth proposals, both sides were like, they gave it like the stink eye and they like walked away from the table for like three minutes or something, whatever, you know. Um, you know, I guess, uh, you know, uh, tactical moves, whatever you want to call it. And then this week, they're sitting down every day this week in Florida, started yesterday. And there was, there was a little bit more like wiggle room according to like the reports because I've been reading up on it. Um, and... They have until Monday to come to, uh, you know, collect the bargaining agreement before they have to start canceling regular season games. What is the major bone of contention between the two sides, do you know? Yeah, so in basic terms, the owners are making more money and the, the average player salary went down for the first time over like the last two days, two years. Well, I think uh, Baseball, like the rest of the sports, I think the pie is getting smaller, though. No, nah, it's gotten bigger. It's gotten bigger. Where, where, where are they getting income streams from? I don't know, but it's it's somewhere between 10 to $15 billion a year. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So it's grown from 
I'm pretty sure of my, I remember when I read three billion to like 13 to 15 million in the last 20. Is it all TV revenue? You think? I didn't, they, they didn't, I just heard, I heard that from like a. So I, I thought attendance was down across the board. Attendance, like people sitting in the seats. I don't know. I, I, if that could be true, I, I'm not sure, but there, there, it's a over a $10 billion pie that they donors aren't. This is from the players' perspective. You know, they feel like they should, there should be more. Um, they want um, for beginner players a bigger pool of money to be given out to like the new, you know, the rookies and the arbitrational type guys. They want the first eight um, picks in the draft to be a lottery, like basketball. Uh, there's some of the things that I read. Um, DH already passed, so I. I don't know how that passed <laughs> like in the under like they got like it was like quick. Yeah, DH is now universal, so that's a thing. Oh really? Um, yeah, that that like but like they weren't meet. I don't know how that got passed without them meeting, but whatever. They no one really the articles I read didn't really explain that. Um but so yeah, they're just been over, you know, like the players want more of the pie. And like whether that you just whether they deserve it or not, you know, it from an outside source who 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 doesn't no baseball, they, they would probably say this. I can't believe millionaires are fighting over money with billionaires, right? That's like a common thing you've heard. But when you're in the shoes of a baseball player and you're not Francisco Lindor and you're a, a maybe a guy who plays three to five years, yeah, of course you want to try to get as much as you can because you're only making – now, I only say only because in the and this is like connected to the, how it is in baseball. You're only making half a million dollars. Like Pete Alonso still makes half a million dollars. Yeah, yeah. Aaron Judge makes doesn't make a million dollars a year. Wow. So like that's and those guys are like 28, 29. And that's I think part of the problem is like these you the control they have over these players is six, seven years. And you know, the long-term contract is, is gonna is eventually gonna die out. It just doesn't make sense. You know, and and people like always refer to the long-term contract, but the reality is. That's 10 players out of 700. What well, constitutes long-term, like seven years or more or something? So, yeah, I, ten, 10 seems to be a big number. Like Harper got 13, Bryce Harper, Francisco Little got 10, Mookie Betts got 10. So, it's, you know, 10 to 13, you know, it seems to be like the – but, like, that's not that's not the normal contract. The normal contract is the Peter Alonzo and the Aaron Judge, who for seven years – Every year after five, they go to arbitration and then they win a little bit more money. And maybe Alonso is making a little bit more money now. I, I, I'm not sure. But, you know, every year, you, you know how it goes. Like you fight for a little bit more based on the how much your position is making compared stats compared to the other guys. And, right. But like, you know, Aaron Judge is 30 years old and is still under his initial rookie seven year contract. Wow. What so, I would, yeah, like I would think both players, the two guys you mentioned, Alonzo and Judge, probably fared pretty well in arbitration, though. Especially Alonzo, yeah, yeah. fifty home a season. Did he have arbitration after that? No, you got it. You got to serve five. Alonzo's not there yet. Judges, judges at arbitration. Oh, I see how that works. Okay, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's four years, but I think it's like after five years you can start getting arbitration for the next two or three. Like Syndergaard, his last two or three, four for arbitration. You know, and he started to make some more money and then whatever, etc. But like. You know, for the for you know the the average baseball player, you're playing five years, right? Like you know, the, like people, you know, it's so easy to pick out the all star team of guys, but there's 792 guys in baseball. There's 800 guys in baseball. Yeah, well, they can get another job when they leave baseball. I mean, they you know, could. They, they have could, to, but you're playing only five years. You have to be set for life after that, or what? No, I, I I'm just stating like what's being like thrown around. Yeah, no, I hear you, but I, I, I understand. Yeah. yeah. So, but it, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting and like ugly. Uh, and then on top of it, it's like after like everything that the world's been going through, you're just like, you got this, you, you know, like there's people like, you know, out of, you know, people like struggling for money, I'm sure, and out of jobs. And I think that's you, my point. Yeah. You're worried about in, instead of making two million, you want four. It's like, mm -hmm. all right. And then the owner's like, you know, instead of making uh, $500 million, you're scared to, to give up $100 million and only make $400 million or whatever. I'm just throwing out numbers. but I know. Well, it's, it's, uh, the average <laughs> man can't relate to the numbers. Hold on one second. You know what I mean? The average fan can't relate to the numbers they're throwing at each other, you know. So, at least I know I can't, you know. No, who, who knows? I mean, unless you're like, you know, in – 
in an industry where you make a lot of money, but who knows what it's like to play baseball and get like Francisco Lindor's check has to be close to a game has to be close to half a million dollars. I don't know what the number is, but that that's a imagine that one game you're making a half a million or whatever the number is. Oh yeah. Someone like him, it would be hard for him to retire and then go get it, you know, get a real estate license or something. Yeah, he, he's yeah. Like, like this is what he's. He's either gonna you know get into baseball or you know like Alex Rodriguez is a good example or Derek Jeter, right? Those guys made buckets of money for their time, and now Derek Jeter owns the Marlins, and I don't know how much of the percentage. And then A Rod has his own like real estate company, but like, like a you know like a monster company, not like one just you know from a neighborhood. Like it's a huge real estate company. So yeah, you know more money. You need money to make more money, right? And that's what these guys are doing. Yeah, but the, the schlub that's there for three has a three year career, five year career. Um, is it beneath him to get like a, a regular job after that, or how does that roll? I would but, guess most of them work. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, know, you have to do something. Well, let's say that you work, you play five years, and you make, you know, let's call it two point five mil. You know, if you go with investment, maybe you don't have to work. Hmm. But you know, I I don't know, you know, like if you gave me 2.5 million, I wouldn't be too confident that I would I would turn it into 10. <laughs> yeah. You know. Well, like I say, it's uh, you know, not relatable, not relatable to the average person. There's numbers they're throwing at each other, but I'm not overly familiar with the numbers they're throwing at each other. Yeah. But uh, I know I I, I I happened to read an article that the ratings were down last year in baseball. Um as I said in a previous podcast, none of them dropped further than basketball. It's like the ratings are in the crap with basketball. Uh, they were. I don't know if that's the case this this season. I couldn't. I, I don't pay attention to the ratings. Um, the thing, a lot of it could have been COVID related. A lot of games yeah. canceled. Or, I know that obviously, um, was it last year or the year before last? There was nobody in the stands. Cardboard fans, a stupid thing. But so you can't really gauge twenty twenty. 2021, I think they had people in the stands, though. Yes, that was last year. Yeah. So, but I, I just know the TV ratings were down. Like the World Series TV ratings were way down. And a lot of the NBA games were way down. But like I say, until we get through this COVID thing, uh, you you know, you, it's not really a true gauge, I don't think. You know, just whatever. People uh, aren't turning to sports like they used to. Yeah, I think, uh, <clears throat> excuse me again, I apologize to anybody, I, I just got this tickle in my throat. I don't know if it's allergies. Um, it's the next variant. You're, in, you're on the, you know, you're ahead of the curve. Could be, could be, a variant number 17. But uh, I, you some, and two other people I know off the top of my head have stopped watching sports since the last couple of years. And so I think that's also like a trend. I think there's people... I, and we might have talked about this in a different podcast, but you know, there's, there's people are doing other things with their lives. And, and I think there's been a perspective, uh, a bit of a perspective uh, flip or switch or change for people um, on the, uh, what they're willing to put forth effort into or what they want to spend their time on. You know? Yeah, no, I agree with that. But I know baseball for years has had a youth problem, you know, bringing kids along, getting them interested in the game itself. And, uh, you know, harvesting them as they get into high school playing or college playing ball, you know. I know they've had a youth. It's, you know, youth doesn't play baseball like you and I did when we were growing up. No, no. There's uh, Well, you see it for, with uh, my nephew's rec league. That's not the travel league. That's just like the standard league. Um, it's like four teams, five teams. Like we, There was like 10 teams. I don't know. Maybe it was eight. I don't know. But there was a lot more teams I remember as a kid. Like 12, you know, 15 guys on a team? Yeah, yeah. And now it's like 8 to 10 on a team, and it's only like five yeah. teams or something. Yeah. Well, soccer has made inroads. <clears throat> They've been trying. Sorry. Soccer has, has been trying to make inroads for a long time, and they're really succeeding in terms of capturing the interest of kids, what they want to do. Do they want to play baseball or do they want to play soccer? Yeah. And, uh, I don't know. It just seems a lot of the things that went on in baseball, going back to the steroids era, I don't know if kids are, you know, getting it passed down to them like like it got passed down to me and it got passed down to you. 
so which is a sad state of affairs. You know, I think that's sad because it was it was a good solid American tradition from for a hundred and something years. So I don't know. I just you know, you know, I, I, I'm kind of bewildered when you said the pie is bigger. I I don't see where their revenue streams are coming from, but that's, you know, that's just, just just what the article said. You know, so. well, I'm not overly versed in you know sports uh, economics anyway, but. I'm sure they're getting their money from somewhere, TV rights or naming rights or whatever the hell rights they sell. Yeah, the this, this same thing happened in football. I forget how many years ago, but they had the same threat of a strike and the, the players wanted, you know, like the pies, you know, like over the last 20 years, you know, money is just like, it seems like it's doubled and tripled in every industry. It seems that way. I, I'm not saying I'm right, but it seems like there's a lot more money being made quickly, right? And, uh, players in football wanted more piece of the pie, which, which I get it. Like, you know, it's, it's sitting from my living room as a teacher. I could be like these guys, these guys, but if I was, you know, it's like anything else when you're in your, when it's your situation, no matter what it is, you're going to react to your situation. It's sometimes it's hard to step back and be like, I'm just grateful to be playing baseball or an owner's be like, I'm just grateful, you know, like that we have this and I should give more money out to the players. Like, you know, unfortunately power and greed is, you know, it plays a part in all of us. Yeah, and looking out for yourself is there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm sure this, you know, the business side of sports in general and baseball specifically has changed a lot. I don't. Yeah. Know, I think. I think the 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 the, the revenue <clears throat> derived from. See, now I'm getting you a tickle from the internet. Yeah. That's why I got my little just to help me with it. I got uh, Poland Spring here, where what it means to be from uh, Maine. But anyway, uh, the. Um, I don't know how much they rely on the, you know, asses in the seats anymore. You know, I think the attendance is probably, you know, that might pay for, you know, the paint job they give the stadium every year or something. But I think a lot of their money is derived from TV revenue. Yeah. So it's all, it's a complicated. <clears throat> there are certain things that are changing in the economy in general. And that, that trickles down to sports specifically. So who knows? Yeah, the um, you know the pandemic accelerated the idea of like being out less, right? At least for now, like that's that's a fact. Like people are leisurely, or people are out less. So I know, like I, I I'm agreeing with you. Like I I could see how like for sports teams, you know, like even the Knicks um, uh, don't sell out every game now. I'm pretty sure. And not like, even when they suck, they sell out. It's the garden. They, it always sells out. It's like, you know, it's 18,000 people. It's not that hard to, you know, 9 million people in the, in the city. It's not that hard to, plus tourists, to get people to, you know, fill the seats in, you know, the garden, especially when it's right in the middle of Manhattan. Um, but I'm guessing like, yeah, attendance has to be like uh, a concern. And baseball right now is number three in the country. It's not number two. It's football, basketball, and the baseball. According to the report, uh, what TV re ratings or re revenue ratings, all that stuff. I think well, it's numbers. That's why I'm, so I'm surprised when you said mm -hmm. the pie is bigger because, you know, just from a, a pedestrian point of view, it seems like it's shrinking. Yeah, somewhere it's somewhere around 10 billion. I, I mean, but I know football is more than that. And I believe base basketball is too because, mm -hmm. you know, basketball and football have, have become global. Not that baseball isn't global and it's players but basketball um and football like i mean basketball is, is the most it might be the biggest sport in the world now no. or it's closing in on or it's closing on soccer it's everywhere now you know yeah you know, it's got a long way to go to to meet to to uh catch up to soccer or they call it football over there but yeah but it's on that arc, right? You know, like even if I'm wrong, it's headed towards that Traject trajectory. Yeah, yeah, because the, the, the dream team changed it all. The dream team made basketball global in 1992. You know? mm -hmm. Well, we'll see how it goes. But uh, getting back to the original point, you think the see the baseball season will start on time? After reading the two reports today, I, like today's reports won't come out till like tonight at like nine. So I'll check at nine. But yesterday's, I wasn't like overly, uh, um, there was, there was some, there was some wiggle room, but it wasn't like, so like the players want 
150 million dollars more for first year first contract players whatever the hell that means i couldn't tell you exactly and right the last time the owners offered 15 million and this counter yesterday they only they upped it to 20 million i was like okay like it's that's what i mean like they they, they budged a smidge it wasn't like they like budged mm-hmm. so that's not like if they kind of were like all right we're gonna give you 75 million Okay, then maybe they come down to like 120 and eventually find it around 90 or 100, which that's how bargaining works, right? Yeah. But you go from 150 to 15 and they counter back to 25 million more, you're like, that's not a good sign. Well, uh, usually around this time of year is when pitchers and catchers would report. But I think you and I can both agree that spring training is way too long to begin with. So I, I think they have some room to do some further negotiating before they jeopardize opening day around the league. Yeah, they, they, they say that you really, sweet, sweet training is six weeks. It should, uh, players say it should be four. It should be four weeks long. And then that's why this Monday coming up is the, uh, it's the uh, decar- demarcation line, if I'm saying it right. It's that line that you, you, uh, you can't cross, otherwise they'll start taking games away. Well, uh, of course, I'm talking from somebody sitting in New York. If I owned a diner in Port St. Lucie, Florida, I'd probably have a different point of view. And that, that was what, what was brought up. It was just like, you know, we're, we're players, owners, but what about all the players? I mean, all the people that work at all these spring training sites, all the people that own cafes and diners when they're used to an influx of people coming through. Yeah, it's like, a, it's a huge, it's not just, and like when, I, when you were a kid, like when I was, at least I'll keep it on me, when I was young, I, I didn't understand concepts like that. Like my mind is, I was just like, I want baseball and that's it. You know, like, it, yeah. but like this, it's the impact that, you know, like it's a, it's a $10 billion, whatever, but it's also, you know, like think about all the money it creates for outside people, you know, all the people that work in all these areas that are just not getting that love right now. And, and the major league games. I mean, think, uh, and the regular season games, excuse me, like your father used to work, uh, in spring court over there in the Bronx, which was yeah. basically 300 yards from Yankee Stadium. Yep. And um, uh, you could take a walk around the L there, where the four, the four train is, and see all of those bars and diners and cafes and grocery stores. They're all, and the parking lot, uh, the indoor parking lots, they all rely on the Yankees to support their economy for the year. So you take a, you know, you slice a few, even a few weeks off the re- the regular season and you're cutting into their bottom line. I'm sure yep. that's not going to uh, form part of the conversation they're having on the negotiation, but, you know, they're not taking into account all the other people that make a living residually from these sports, you know? Yeah, it's just, it's, uh, so that's why I think a lot of people have a problem with the, with the, with the, the argument or the fight or the, inability to get to a common ground you know yeah but it just seems to me personally it's the game they, they've changed so many rules in the last few years that you know i used to call them softball rules especially starting the extra innings with the guy on second and uh, whatever but um since that big um steroid scandal i think baseball can't call itself the national pastime anymore. That's for sure. I just think it's lost popularity, at least in this country. You yeah, know, it's it's fo- football. Back on what you just said, it's not even the number one sport in the country anymore. No. It used to be a given that baseball was the sport of America, and it's just not that way anymore. Well, they haven't caught up to. Uh, I think the just generational cultural changes of like how people watch things. Mm-hmm. You know. Like baseball hasn't what and maybe maybe it just naturally can't, but it hasn't caught up or hasn't been able to develop. Like you could watch a basketball game in two hours and fifteen minutes. Like a fast one. A long one's two and a half. You know, baseball, it's you know, it's three, three and a half if it's you know, because just it's it's a slow moving and like I'm fine with that. Me personally, yeah, I would like two forty five is great, but like I, I'm cool with a three hour baseball game, but but I'm I'm all in, I'm committed, like and like that's my choice, right? But for the average viewer, like why would like when people are like I think baseball is boring? I'm like I get it. <laughs> well, it's a, I, I get, it's a slow moving sport to begin with. It's based on it's the only sport not based on a clock. 
Yeah, so yeah, the so sport like to, mentioned is based on a, a running down clock. With baseball, has has never been that way, and that's the appeal. It was always the appeal to me, you know. Yeah, it's about getting out. It's not about like a, you know, like there's no like clock management skill. Like you know, I coach basketball. Like I'm up by six with two to go. Like I'm going to play a certain way to run down the clock, right? Yeah, yeah. So like that's as, as sports go. You know, you gotta you gotta have a it's a slower pace sport to begin with baseball you know you you, you got to have the patience to sit there and watch a guy uh, set up his pitches uh, waste the pitch outside when he's 0 and 2 on a guy you know these kind of things and those little nuances i don't know if it appeals to the younger generation anymore they want that now 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 thing well i i would agree and i heard someone say this you know, this kind of like developed the idea in my head that like people want action, right? Football, like as much as like the crazy part about football is, is there's actually only like supposed to be like 12 minutes of action throughout the whole game. Like it's like hike, whistle, clock running, but the actual like the play moving, it's like a total of 12 minutes, but like it's, it's action packed. People getting hit. Everyone's involved. Everyone's running around. Someone's smashing, like the offensive lines and blocking the defensive line and the quarterback's running for his life and the running back's trying to get open and like, you know, like whatever, like it's, it's it, of those 12 minutes, it's a high action basketball and hockey. I don't have to explain you're just, it's constant movement. Whereas baseball, you know, we talked about this, like on a certain day, like the right fielder may not even get a play. <laughs> you know, he might be you know, like, you know, he might just stand out there all day and like it's, and like it doesn't happen often i'm sure it happens sometimes so like you're, you're like and you have the seats by the right fielder you're like i'm just staring at this guy this guy hasn't done anything all day you know so, so like that's you know like that's baseball but someone said something that was interesting we talked about this you know on top of that you 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 create this whole new idea of how to play defense and you shift everybody around and i'll leave it at that and you ask players to hit home runs and not care about strikeouts what's not happening there's less action yeah. There's less action than ever in this game. And that's the, and I like last year, like, and I, you know, I'm a baseball guy. Like I'm going to be, whatever the opening day is this year, I'll be watching it. You know, I like, that's just, I'm, and I'm fine with it. And that's okay with me. Um, but like last year, like the minute the Mets started to not do good, it's a hard game to watch. If your team's not winning, it is not, it is not fun to watch. Like, yeah, obviously we were in first place. So like, Especially, like, I guess for me as a Met fan, like when you're, we're just dying for a championship, you allow certain things to like, it's like anything else. You just accept it. It's okay. We're winning. I could deal with that. I could deal with like the, the, the nonsense of like no rallies and whatever. But like when you're losing, like it's hard to watch. It's a hard game to watch. But the slow pace of the game or the slower as opposed to other sports game, uh, pace um, to a certain generation, I'll call it old bastards like myself. That was a, the appeal of the game. You go, you relax, you watch a ball game, you, you watch the strategy getting set up, you watch a guy shading a little bit of three, you know, you could see a, you could see a guy and you know, the last three at bats, he was a lefty and he pulled it to right. You could, you could sit in the stands and watch the right fielder shade four or five steps to the right. You know, these little nuances that you pick up and that was the appeal of the game. And I think with all of these, I guess in the last few years, they've tried these speed up methods and, you know, um, starting the game, like I said, with the guy on second, the extra inning and all that crap. All that. Uh, the ghost runner. <laughs> it, it goes against what the appeal of the game was. And, and, you know, I think they just counted on, it's always been this tradition, like a father son tradition of passing the ball game down to your kid, you know, um, you know, for how many generations already since the 1890s, uh, that was the thing, you know, you, you, you grew up watching baseball, you passed it down to your kid, he passes it down to his kid. And that's, and that tradition, um, you know, you can compare, you know, trying to compare, um, Alonzo to say, you know, uh, Willie McCovey or something stupid, you know, a ball play from the past versus a today's guy. And that tradition is, is been evaporated in my opinion. Yeah. yeah it, and, and that was the key to their success. And they don't, 
they do a lot of short term. Let's try and speed up the game. We'll do this, that, and the other thing without with losing sight of the long term strategy, which is what made this game popular to begin with. You know? Yeah. And uh, I, I think that for short term gain, they're losing, they're going to lose the, no pun intended, they're going to lose the ball game in the end. You know? When they get behind hockey as a as a popular sport, they'll know they're in trouble. I guess. Oh, if, if you, you're yeah. So if this lockout all of a sudden decides to linger, this is this is a huge week for baseball, short term and long term. Like this, like you can't. The average fans can be like, "Are you fucking kidding me? You guys can't come to terms. You've had since December first, and like now you're gonna like." Uh, we're going to lose April and May or, and maybe whatever, you know, maybe we lose three months, whatever it may be, but like, that's going to be tough, especially coming off of the steroid. So the lockout in 94, 95 into the steroid era. Right. And now into like this huge change in baseball where people are having, there's a lot of mixed reviews about where baseball is at right now. And then on top of that, like a pandemic where people have pushed away from sports in general, you know, you're, you're asking for it if you can't figure this out. Yeah. And the economy is changing in general and uh, baseball and all the other sports are part of the economy. So people, as you said earlier, are changing their habits in terms of what they do in their leisure time. You know, a lot of people work from home now. And then you have that. What's that? Uh, this is the age of the quit your job thing and whatever the hell these young kids are doing. They don't they're not working. That's all I can tell you. But um I don't know. And, uh, you know, look at this, look at the stats of cable, cable TV. How many people don't have cable anymore? They just don't, they drop their cable, you know, um, they may keep it for the internet access, but, um, in terms of cable TV, when, you know, that thing's been abused too, uh, you're watching shows from 50 years ago, you know, on these channels that you're paying for and you're like screw that you know yeah yeah well yeah cable cable you don't want to uh, want to pay for an hbo subscription whatever the hell it's called for a year and, and you're watching sleepless in seattle which came out in like 45 years ago you know you know what i mean and you, you, you know you know like those rom-coms you know like a rom-com yeah i mean i swore off cable a long time ago i i basically i watch movies on when I want to watch, I want to watch, uh, I watch what I want to watch when I want to watch it. And that's, that, that, that includes the news, uh, a movie, a sporting event or whatever. I know baseball was a, a year or two ago, so signed an agreement. I can't remember if it was YouTube or Facebook. It was probably Facebook to show the live, like selling live packages. I think I think it was Facebook. I think. Yeah, well, I, they made the wrong bet because Facebook Facebook ain't gonna be around too long either. But um, they tried that with cable. You could buy. They had sports packages you could buy on cable. You know, if for some reason you wanted to watch the Kansas City Royals or whatever, you could just order the game and watch it yeah. on cable, which I'm sure still exists. But that's what they need to do: make it more available in more places. Well, here, here's the bullshit with that, because I get the MLB season, because when I go down to Florida for four weeks or five weeks, whatever, like I watch the Mets down there, otherwise I won't be able to watch the Mets. But here's the bullshit about that. And it's not it's it's reasonable. It's like a buck 20 for the season. It's not it's it's pretty reasonable price. It's nothing crazy. I've been doing it for years to watch, to watch just your team or all the games you want. I, I could watch, you know, any game I want. I, you know, I watch the Mets so much, uh, you know, like there's, there's, I'm not, dude, I'm, not, I'm not at a level where I'm watching two games a day. Like I'm watching the A's at night. And the Mets. I don't do that, but you know, like 120 bucks buys you any game that you want to watch anytime. Yeah. But in New York, because of the fucking cable rights, the, the Mets are blocked out. So you can't watch your home team in your home city in that package. Mm. Which is like, well, you have it on Sports New York, don't you have it on SNY? Or? Yeah, I, I have the Met game. I have the Mets. I, like, I'm not like, I'm, all I'm saying is like, you pay all that money and then like, um, because a lot, of, if you think a lot of my cable, like I have, my cable is for sports. But I'm, I'm just curious, why would you need to see the Mets in New York when you can watch them on Sports SNY? 
No, but like the point is like I, I just paid one hundred twenty dollars. Why am I being blacked out of my own home team? That's all I'm saying. Like, oh, but you not like you can't see the game. No, I see. Yeah, I see the Mets. You know, yeah, I watch them. But it's for when I go down to Florida, so I can watch. You know, when I'm down there by myself, like at eight o'clock at night, like the island gets quiet, and you know, I, I'm chilling, so I, I'll watch the Mets game or something. But uh, I, I was just making a point. Like that's it's sometimes because there's certain moments where I'm like. You know, like I, every once in a while, I'm like, I'm like, whatever. I, it'd be nice to watch, just be have access to it because I'm paying for it, but I don't. Mm. But that's like cable nonsense you were talking about before. There's like a lot of rules with cable. Yeah, well, a lot of people are dumping cable, so I don't, I don't think cable's going to be around. If they're going to be anything, it's going to be a uh, just an inter internet provider, you know, because that's really yeah, the streaming service. Uh, who the hell? Who the hell wants to watch? You know, the History Channel. They're watching it. the same guy that that R. Lee Emery, who died ten years ago, he's still doing a commercial on there. That's the same freaking shows over and over again. But um, but sports is the only appeal from my point of view to who's up cable. And then they, like I said, um, they went down to um, Facebook, which I think is a bad bet, in my opinion. You know. Your uh, your TV is rocking. Yeah, so the uh, Facebook is dwindling in uh, in uh, participation. Also, I call it I call it their uh, their fact checking their self out of business. But go ahead, you were going to say something about Facebook. Yeah, the uh, well, I mean, I haven't. You know, I do use still use Facebook Messenger just to keep in touch with a few students that are that are grown with like you know like married and stuff, which is crazy. But um, the this metaverse thing or meta, whatever I don't I don't really know what exactly what they're calling it. Like there, there's it's like a it's a real thing, and there was a commercial on the Super Bowl for it. I didn't think it like, and you see movies in the past about how people are going to live their lives through like this concept, and you're like, wow, this is like really happening. Which is like, for me, I think that's scary. Like, I, that's not something I would get into. I, I'm just not, I'm not judging people that do it. It's just, not, I, I can't see, I couldn't see myself, you know, like interacting with people online, like with like, you know, like you're hanging out in like a, a computer and like, that's where you're hanging out. But that's very yeah. foreign concept to me. But I know that's. I didn't watch this football, uh, Super Bowl. So educate me on what the broad strokes of metaverse is. So, you know, like. I, I would guess it's it's like you know I know that you have some experience with Sims. It's like a simish simish concept, where it's like, but you're like you have your icon or your your avatar. Or I, I guess that's what it's called, and um, and like you know whatever you design yourself to be. And uh, I also saw it on YouTube. You know, like this one kid was dressed up as a uh, in Star Wars. What's the white soldier called? Going blank. Hmm. I'm not. You know the white guy either. So. Stormtrooper, right? One of the stormtroopers, you know. Um, and like then, you know, so he, he and he was going around and like these two kids were hanging out in like a, a room, like a you know, a metaverse room, and then they were like meeting other people and they were talking to each other, and you were just like, all right, like that's just but like that's where we're headed. Like that's like me, I'm sure there's eventually that's like what I'm saying now is the, is a minority thought, if not now, eventually someday that's a minority thought of like, why would you do that? Well, I guess they have to do something because I know a lot of people are uh, deactivating, at least people I know, deactivating their Facebook accounts or just not going on it as much as they used to anymore anyway. Yeah. So I guess they'll have to, you know, try something new anyway because uh, I don't think that business model is sustainable over the long term anyway. So... Would you see yourself doing that? No. You know? No. Go like, like that's out, hanging out like a, what am I a cartoon? Yeah, yeah, I guess like like a video game head figure. Is cartoon? Can I have a, a normal size head in this cartoon? You could. I, th I think you could design yourself any which way you want to design yourself. You know. Oh wow. Yeah, but uh, that's like um, hmm. it's 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 already like up and running. Like that it's not like, like um, that sounds like a thing called Second Life, where you like you create a, what they call an avatar and. You know, you walk around and talk to people, I guess, and whatever. Yeah, I don't know if there's like missions or goals that or objectives that you need to do, or is it just like this wide open thing that we're 
people get to just like, but like there's so like there's like, gonna be so much negativity. I'm sure I'm positivity too, but like I'm gonna focus on the negative. Like so so much negativity that's gonna come from that. Like the amount of like just inappropriate things that are gonna happen in that space. It's not gonna be good. <laughs> you don't foresee it to be a wholesome atmosphere for kids. No, the internet is the wild west. I'm not, but I know you know that. Like you know, there's a lot of just people who are trying to like um, take advantage so much on the internet. Yeah. yeah. Well, you you, so, you you have the the, uh, the the chance to see the very worst of human human beings in the internet. Yeah. Just watch what they say on Twitter or Facebook, and you know. It brings out the worst in you more than it brings out the best in you. Let me put it that way. So yes, I call it, does. it I call it Pandora's box. I don't think I, I don't think today's society, what goes on in today's society is on a sustainable path. I, I just can't see uh, you know, like young kids are being exposed to crap that I never even heard of when I was their age. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like a second nature to them, and they're gonna be running these running things soon and it just i can't see society sustaining itself this celebrity culture bullshit and all you know no the, the the um my nephew so i said something to my nephew and like and he's 11 10 11 yeah so like kids his age are like political because of how society is right now wow you know but like they, like they, they have a they're like in tune to like like the like the polit like it's crazy because it's so poli the polit this our culture is so politicized right now and I don't know, hopefully hopefully it dials back a little bit but um and I said something about a neighborhood and I said it was I was like it was a predominantly like it's a white neighborhood like it wasn't really, like it was a, it's a fact like that's just that's just how it is like I'm not and he's like oh he, he gave me a look I'm like why and he gave me a look and. I'm like, Colin, like that, like that's not my opinion. Like that's a fact. That like it's okay. To, you, you have to be okay to say stuff like that. Like that's just I'm not agreeing with it or disagreeing with. It. I'm just stating a fact. Like that's a truth, you know. And like, but like just for him to when I was 11 years old, if you and my mom were having a conversation and you said that, I wouldn't even paid. I would have been like anyway. Like I would be over thinking about like how to strike some kid out the next day. Like I like I wasn't. My point being is like I wasn't thinking at that age about anything political. Mm -hmm. So it, like, it was like, a, it was a little like, you know, like, I'm like, and then you hear other kids in our school, like, but like, because it's so like engrossed in the culture right now, like, I'm like, dude, you're 12, you're 13 years old. You should be talking, trying to talk to the cute kid over there that you like, like, what, what are you worried about? What are you worried about rushing Ukraine right now? Keep it moving. I know. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Oh, it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know? if, they're, if, they're, if they're that age, there's five years before they can vote anyway, what the hell? But yeah, it's, it's it, we're on this hyper cultural thing that's just yeah I tune it out because it's just too stressful. I think we discussed previously how little news I watch anymore because all I do is get stressed, you know. So it's just one of those things. I I, I can't see this particular society uh, sustaining itself with this BS that's going on. You know, yeah. just too wackadoo. Maybe it is, I'm just an old man, and that's what an old man how an old man looks at things. But you know, it's because I remember my father always using the term "the world is going to hell in a handbasket," mm -hmm. and I try and uh, be careful not to look at things. You know what I mean? Have I, I try to be? I try to look at both sides of things. To see if it's a bit, you know, maybe it's just because I'm getting old. I, I feel like the world's going to hell in a handbasket, Sean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> you're like, I, you know, I try not to be that way, but I'm exactly that way. <laughs> and yeah. maybe it's yeah, maybe someone, someone, you know, because I used to laugh at him when I was 14, you know, but maybe somebody 14 would laugh at me for saying that. But it just, I just, I don't see the way things are going. I don't see how it's sustainable. Yeah. I, but I guess that's what I'm saying is I don't like you would laugh in 1990 whenever I was 14. I would have laughed. I don't know if kids laugh about it anymore. Mm. You know, that, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Like, you know, my nephew did, you know, like whatever. He didn't do anything wrong, but he responded in like, a, like as if I did something wrong. And well, like, I hope I when you're 14, you don't think the world's going to hell in a handbasket. I would hope you have yeah. a more positive outlook than, you know, someone my age, you know. 
But uh, you know, they, they, like the, the, these kids from let's call it two years ago, anyone that was eight to like 20, 20 years old, man, they're like they've been excuse me, they've been impacted greatly. Um, you know, they've lost two years of adolescence. They lost two years of growing up, like like of the quote unquote, because you know they knew what it was like before this. You know, anyone that's six, they they, they might not remember exactly what it was like. They kind of just they can't remember the pandemic, but you know they've they've grown up so, in a way that none of us can ever relate. Yeah, well, like I, I I hope if you're that age, uh, first of all, if you're that age, you shouldn't be watching this because we curse sometimes. But if you're that age. Um, I hope you have a more positive note <laughs> than Sean and our Johnny boy and I do, you know. But uh, that's, you know, that's the way life is, human nature, you know. So we'll see. Either way, I'm, I'm glad I'm on the other side of the hill because I wouldn't want to be up and coming in this day and age. But, you know, if you were, if you were Jewish in Germany in 19... Yeah, yeah. I'm sure things are better today than they were, you know. Um. That's funny. I, I I met a customer over the weekend whose father just passed away a couple of months ago, and was uh, a Holocaust survivor. You know, I always lament about how many World War II veterans we lose. Think about the um, people that were in the concentration camps. We're coming to the end of that generation too. So I hope, oh, yeah. I hope those lessons. Sincerely hope those lessons get passed down. You know, because once the you know, firsthand experience is gone. It's it's hard to pass that history down in its purest form. You know. Yeah, like that yeah, for someone who's lived it for sure. Yeah. So we, we've had. Uh, it struck me because I'm. You know, I I've always been focused on. You know, World War Two veterans. I've said in the past, if I meet one, my knees buckle. That's just the. You know, I'm astounded, and. Um, you know, it's the first time I contemplated that that his father was a. Holocaust survivor and you know Jewish fella and his father was I guess Jewish in uh, I'm assuming Germany or Poland or one of those conquered nations back in World War II you know that's a history that has to be preserved as well because that's you know and when those when that generation goes goes away we got to make sure that history gets passed down as well so yes yeah. oh yeah all, all of it right yeah, all of it. It was sort of like a re revelation to me because I never actually contemplated that, not being Jewish. <clears throat> um, you know, those those people are, are going, it's all part of the greatest generation, as it's so-called. And those people are falling by the wayside too, the Holocaust survivors, you know. So these are all things that need to be preserved or, or else uh, if you forget about it, you're doomed to repeat it. Yeah, look, uh, and look at look at New York City. Look at the lessons we learned in the seventies. We're all forgotten, and now it's nineteen seventy seven again in New York City, where you gotta you take your life in your hand getting on the subway. You know, so yeah, which is crazy. You know, it's just you, uh, it's off the rail. Every a lot of pieces of this society is completely off the rails. You know, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what the answer is, but I'm on the other side of the hill. So. <laughs> it's for somebody younger than me to worry about more than me. So yeah, it's my it's, it's my generation is in, is the next up in charge. You know, no, your generation is the one that ruined this country. What? <laughs> that they, um, no, the people younger than you. You're forty something. I'm talking about people in their twenties are going to be running things. Next time you turn around. Yeah, I, I meant more in like in like political decisions. Like it's it's my generation is the next group coming up you know mm, i don't know this like, AOC, like, aoc is younger than you are i hate to tell you yeah that's, that's one person um uh but like you know traditionally uh people in government are like you know 40 to 60 traditionally that, that's 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 you to me it seems like they're uh, 70 to 80 yeah but like tr traditionally um but, um, so b b before we wrap up, I just uh, I'll th like connected to your New York City thing is that uh, you, you, did you see Eric Adams, the, the new mayor? And like he, he kind of like lost it a little bit. <laughs> uh, what did he do? Uh, he, some reporter asked him, I, I don't want to misquote or whatever, but 
something about like you know like you know what are you going to do with you know the crime rates that, like you know it's been now two months and like what's your plan or like you know how are you going to help fix the safety issues and crime in new york city and then i don't know how it turned and, and i'm just very generally stating so but then he like uh got upset at the reporters and said that there, there needs to be more diversity in reporting and all this stuff it just that's the latest thing i have in new york city Oh, I still think uh, you have to give him some more time. I mean, uh, oh yeah, he, he, he gets he's not gonna he's not gonna switch the light back on in in three months. It's just too far from the previous administration down there. Yeah, he he's gonna need a good year or two before before this even remotely turns around. Yeah, you got to give him some uh, leeway, you know. Yeah, but uh, we'll see. Nowhere to go to but up. My way I look at it. So. Yeah, and it will. It, 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 I mean, New York City may never, may never be the same with the fact that you have, you know, millions of people going to work and rushing to office buildings. That may be different. But New York City will come back. They always come back. Well, New York City has more than people realize going for it. So, yeah, uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We, sh we, we will. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Johnny boy. Well, thanks for sitting with your old Uncle Tom here and solving the world's problems again but you got it too you know, just uh, i'll leave you with this you know the more you learn about history the less likely you'll uh repeat it so that's what they say yeah i would i would uh, leave that out there for be somebody to chew on somewhere so and there it is on that happy note we'll see you next time all right brother all right have a good night